Hey guys, it's Michael Barry, a hiking guy. It's giving that information, that knowledge to go out there and hike with confidence. And in this video, we're going to actually talk about the hidden truths of poison oak, something that uh, most people never even talk about. Okay, so I'm up here in a real secret place, a place that I like to go and kind of explore a little bit and reconnect with nature. So I'm not really going to give away this location because I don't want everybody coming to my secret spots. But we're going to be talking about uh, poison oak and really honestly the hidden truths of poison oak, something that a lot of people don't actually talk about because poison oak has a ton of benefits. So more or less with the woodland community around it. A lot of that stuff, poison oak plays a big role in. So let's dig into the uh, the positives of poison oak. But before we do, let's just clarify poison oak in general. Now I've talked about poison oak on another video. Me and Beth have brought it up before. So we can go on and on and on about it. And definitely poison oak is something that a lot of people always have in their mind when they're hiking. You know those mountain lions and poison oak and rattlesnakes and all this stuff, all the negative things about hiking out there quite a lot within the within the public and of course the media. That poison oak is actually in no relation to the oak family. So with that common name you think poison oak is, oh must be an oak. No it's not an oak. It's not related to oak although it sounds like it. Common names get you every time I tell you, some of the common names that they have out there, I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, <laughs> um, so don't go around there thinking that poison oak is uh, in the same family as an oak. Poison oak is in a family with a few other things you might have actually heard of, and one might actually shock you. Uh, the family of poison oak is Anacardiaceae, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the poison sumac is in the same family as poison oak, and so is the cashew. That's right, the cashew. Now, cashews are actually poisonous, well, more or less the shell, and cashews are actually, uh, they're not a nut, they're actually a seed. But I don't really want to get into cashews, but cashews are poisonous as well, but it's more or less the raw cashews. I know, you go to the grocery store and you're thinking to yourself, what the hell? Well, the raw cashews, I had that last night, what's going to happen? Calm down. The raw cashews are actually not entirely raw, they steam them before they put them out on the market so it gets all that toxicity out of there. So 80 to 90 percent of the people that live here in America and around the world in general um, have a reaction to poison oak and some more severe than others. It's about 90 percent of people and just a few primates uh, have uh, reactions to poison oak. I don't know what primates it is, gorillas, monkeys, I'm not really entirely sure. You might have to go check that out. But um, we, we have reaction to it and then just a few selective primates. So the birds, the insects, all that stuff. Well, they have a different relationship to poison oak and they definitely do not get all worried about it like we do. This is people get confused with poison oak and poison ivy. Ivy is in the east side, you know, just like the, the bluebirds and the blue jays when I was talking about that prior before in another video. Check it out if you like. Um, same thing. So if you ever have any questions about that, poison oak, west poison ivy yeast. Not everything of the poison oak is actually oily and all that stuff. So we have poison oak, the the dry leaves of poison oak, the nectar, and the pollen of poison oak do not have the oily poisonous substance um, that we all avoid like the plague. So that stuff's okay. But the other part of the poison oak, all that other stuff, is has got the oils and, and what have you. A lot of people think that poison oak is not dangerous uh, in the winter, that it uh, goes dormant and it becomes friendly and then turns back to an evil bastard uh, come spring. And that's not true either. Poison oak, uh, you can get it all through the whole course of the year. Um, so if you have an allergic reaction to poison oak, uh, just in general, it's a good idea to just kind of avoid it, leave it be, let it do its thing and keep your distance. Uh, there is some people out there that actually think that poison oak, for some apparent reason, if you stand next to it, I actually have a big bush right here, that all of a sudden you are going to get the rash and it's just gonna make a, a whole world full of fun just by looking at it. And that's not true at all. That's There's no evidence to prove that if you look at poison oak, it'll turn you into a itchy, itchy monster 
no case at all. But it does go on your clothes and sometimes you can't feel it and you might touch your clothes. It got touched by poison oak and then the process starts or if you're itching it gets into your fingernails and, and so on. I can go on about it but uh, we're going to talk more about the positive things of poison oak. I have poison oak next to me in every different direction. So what the heck, why, why do we have so much poison oak and is it even native? It is native. And that is, it is a native plant and it plays a huge role in, trust me. So here I am coming up a single track trail. I got some soapweed here. And of course I've got poison oak in different directions. It's everywhere. Poison oak can pretty much be a shrub. It can be kind of a ground cover. It can be a, a vine, grow up the, the uh, trunks of oak trees. And it can definitely also kind of in some ways be like a mini multi-trunk tree. So it does take different forms. Now poison oak plays a major role in uh, one way. In the fall, it looks absolutely beautiful. It has these vibrant orange and red colors and really looks stunning. And it's just something to really reflect on and uh, be at peace when you're enjoying your fall hikes. But we're in spring right now, so a lot of the flower and the pollen stuff's taking action. Um, and what's going on right now is it's it's flowering and then it's going to make the uh, berries and get those all good to go and those berries play a key role in the bird community so if you're a birder and you can't stand poison oak and you think all poison oak should go think again um, because it plays a major role in the bird community as well as the little rodents like uh, squirrels and uh, wood rats which are more or less like mice but it plays a big role in those that community and about uh, roughly anywhere from 40 to 50 birds I can't really know the exact number rely on the poison oak for its berries and, and other things and they don't have any side effects to the poison oak whatsoever they end up doing pretty well actually they do really well poison oak plays a major role in in providing the food providing the resources and providing shelter for some of these smaller rodents and then there's other things like the deer that eat the poison oak when the leaves are dry in the fall and they drop to the ground and now they're not oil anymore. But that doesn't mean that they don't have a resistance to it because they, they do. They're pretty much resistant to it. Uh, elks, I've heard of horses eating it. Um, so it, it plays uh, a role in that too. So they're providing food, they're providing the berries, they're providing a sense of shelter. Um, and, and in some ways protection um, for the oak tree. So it plays a major role within the oak community. It kind of works alongside of the oaks as the oaks are providing a ton of resource to the community, a ton of shelter and food and, and everything they do so well. The poison oak is also playing a major role in that as well and they're doing their part to provide food and shelter and comfort to the, to the community of uh, animals that we have and love here so much in the Bay Area. The also the great thing is that if there was a fire and because we've we've had so many fires that have happened in California these last few years and definitely a whole ton of apocalypse uh, going on in 2020. So it plays a major role within the in the community by getting back up and uh, providing the shade for all the animals, providing those leaves, providing those berries getting everything back up and running again so the community of nature has something to work off of and uh, give them the shelter, give them that food, give them that supplies so they can continue to go on even though a, a major fire had just passed by and, and done some destruction. Um, so they, they play a major role and you can always see um, in an area, take so whenever there's a fire you can take note of that and say hey how's the poison oak doing and see how fast and rapid it's growing back up and uh, getting back out there to help with the community um, is, is a, a huge player. I love nature so much when a fire happens. It's, it's hard for me to really process because there's a lot of these older trees that are growing and uh, providing so much for us as a community. And when people tell me, oh, well, it'll grow back, it's hard for me because it's, it's a big, long process. See, these trees are, they're like people to me. Um, right? Me and this blue oak had a real deep conversation about that, didn't we? All right, well, guys, thank you so much. I really enjoy making this video for you. Hopefully, uh, the wind wasn't too bad. And I noticed uh, a big increase in, in su subscribers, so that's great. Uh, we're like over 900 now. <laughs> it was like I've been so busy with work. 
I'm working these like 12 hour days sometimes. Uh, don't worry guys, I love you all. Um, so I'm trying to uh, provide uh, my own sense to the community. I definitely want to focus a lot on making more videos, which is coming up, I promise you. Um, as well as I'm going to Marker 32 for some of you uh, that are familiar with Marker 32 up at Ohlone Wilderness. I did a video on it. You guys are all welcome to check it out. Um, and I cannot wait to get up to Marker 32. Hopefully we can, me and this, uh, my buddy Zach are going to be able to do it. We get up there, check it out, get some footage for you guys to see what the damage was. When you're out there and you're enjoying nature and you might think about the negatives of poison oak and how it can cause you to itch and do bad things. And yes, you need to... Uh, keep your distance absolutely I totally understand I'm a little bit more resistant to it but some people are not that's completely understandable but just remember the role that it plays in our natural community we have here and it's playing a big role so leave it leave it alone let it do its thing um, let it enjoy enjoy um, just enjoy it from a distance and enjoy all the birds and stuff that it, that also uh, take a, a you know take a liking to that as well, and that goes for all things of nature, whether it's a rattlesnake or, or a mountain lion or something. Just learn to understand these animals, to understand these species, to understand things that you might fear, because when you do that, you'll have a better understanding to what it's purposely doing. Um, and I think a lot of people get caught up in the fear. And they get caught up in the fear, the, the concept of fear of things. And it can really d distract you or sidetrack you from what the really reality of everything really is. So um, understand it, respect it, and, and keep your distance from it. Because if we were to take out the poison oak, it would drastically change our environment we have here immensely. Shift things big time. If we took out the rattlesnakes, we would have some serious situations. So it is very, very important when you're out there, especially now, to keep your distance from things that are dangerous. Um, but do not, you know, cut off a rattlesnake's head or tear up poison oak with your gloves or something of that nature. Leave it be. Um, please f do that for me. Do that for nature. Do that for, for your, your children and beyond because it's, it's going to provide this sense of beauty that we have here and uh, we enjoy so much and, and don't leave your trash around either that's not a good thing okay guys um, thank you so much once again I, I love you all and I hope you really enjoyed this video and you got a lot of information from it from the best of my abilities um, take care and have a great one